Hello and welcome back to America's Forum here on Newsmax TV. I'm John Bach and we continue to take a closer look at some of today's health headlines. I want to bring in Newsmax Health Deputy Editor Nick Tate and Morgan Thompson, who's here with us on the set today. It's both. Uh, it's great to have both of you guys with us. Good to be with you. I want to follow up real quickly before we get to this issue with the heart and these uh, some of these new heart guidelines and talk real quickly, Nick. We're seeing uh, more and more people smoke marijuana in this country. What are some of the health side effects that we're seeing? Well, you know, there, there's a much richer history on the effects of alcohol on, on mm -hmm. uh, people than there is with, with weed. But in fact, the research is showing that it affects, it affects concentration, it affects reaction time, and it's really a concern when it comes to driving. A lot of people tend to de-emphasize the impact, but it really can affect you when you're driving. And another issue that was kind of late breaking that I wanted to get to today, because I know it affects a lot of our audience, uh, is this issue with testosterone mm -hmm. treatment. This has been held as kind of a miracle cure for a lot of mm -hmm. aging males. Um, and uh, you know, today we're learning that it could cause some problems for your heart. Well, as we get older, in fact, men le testosterone levels can decline. And if they get low, you lose energy, libido is affected. Very, uh, there are various other health effects. But there is a kind of Goldilocks effect. You can get too much as well. So getting those levels right through hormone testing is really the way to go. All right. So read the news and talk to your doctor. All right. Let's take a closer look at the issue with hearts now. Turning now to an issue that has stirred a lot of controversy in the medical community that will affect you as a health care consumer. The American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association have just released new guidelines uh, for the management of cholesterol and the assessment of uh, health heart risks. The guidelines have raised some questions for many, including Dr. Oz. Uh, Morgan, some of this stuff is kind of confusing. It's true, John. Thanks so much. It really is very confusing. And at the heart of the controversy, a new risk calculator and the recommendation for people to start taking statins. Now, the calculator assesses your risk of cardiovascular disease by including factors like age, race, and gender. But the way those factors are weighted has the potential of doubling the number of Americans taking chloral Chlor oh, cholesterol lowering statins. Now, what's most shocking about this, that number includes more than 45 million Americans who don't currently have cardiovascular disease. Dr. Oz, among others, advocates recognizing all your risk factors and then talking to your doctor about how to reduce each one of them. He also advocates tracking changes in cholesterol levels, something the guidelines don't mention. That's important to keep a close eye on those cholesterol levels. Nick, it's confusing with good cholesterol, uh, bad cholesterol. What, were your, what was your take on this new information? Well, I, I do think that the real concern here is whether these guidelines are going to be pushing more statins. Mm. Uh, they, they have the effect of, as, as Morgan said, doubling the number of people who could be on statins if the, if the cardiologists right. are following, following the guidelines. And the question is, is popping a pill really the best way to deal with heart disease? Or should mm -hmm. we be pushing things like diet and exercise and, and stress management? That's really the issue. The two numbers you need to keep in mind are the LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, mm -hmm. needs to be under 100. Your HDL, that's the good cholesterol, needs to be over 50. And you can manage those through diet and exercise and for those who need it the statins as well but that's the concern is that the weight here the heart of the controversy mm -hmm. as Morgan says is that it's really pushing pills over other lifestyle factors that should right. be taken into consideration. Yeah. Now my understanding is the new guidelines actually don't ask you your they don't take in the, your cholesterol levels anymore not your number. They will measure them as part of a larger analysis uh, okay. but what they do is they're the, the risk calculator that indicates where you have are in the danger zone mm -hmm. is based on outmoded information mm -hmm. and inaccurate information that okay. is as much as 20 years old so where they those numbers indicate you should be on a statin are really in question. Dr. Mm -hmm. Oz guys is a very popular uh, medical expert with our mm -hmm. audience and in, in the whole country as well and you know if he's going to get behind something <laughs> he's, he's done his research because mm -hmm. he understands the implications of, of uh, weighing in on a specific issue issue like this, but it also seems like there's more and more evidence here uh, that the philosophy of better living through chemistry no longer applies. Right. Well, he's a holistic guy, you know, he, yeah. he, and, and many doctors look at the big picture, and that's really what, what most doctors should do. As a patient, what does that mean for you? You really need to be talking to your doctor about what are my risk factors, how can I address each one of them, not one particular one, not mm -hmm. cholesterol only, or, you know, not diet only, and, and that's really what Dr. Roz is about. No, I know he said you should really monitor your changing cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. Is this something you can do at home, or do you have to keep going to the doctor for this? You really need the blood test. Okay. Um, many tests, it's not, the tests are just a snapshot of what it is today. Think about your weight. You get on the scale today, it may be a certain level, but, you know, you really need to look at what is it tomorrow, next right. week, the week after, what was it a month ago. That's where you, where you can really tell whether mm -hmm. your diet plan or your fitness plan is working. The same is true with cholesterol. The blood okay. tests need to be done over time, and that trend line needs to be, need to be examined. You know, oh, oh, go sorry. ahead, Morgan. I'm sorry. What about other things you can do? You know, we did talk a little bit about lifestyle factors. What about things that are in your control, like stopping smoking, exercising more, eating better? 
What are the most important things that you can do to take charge of your health? Those are key. You know, it's really not very sexy advice, but the, <laughs> but the truth is you have to move more and eat less for most Americans. Eat a diet that's whole, has a lot of whole grains, a lot of fruits and vegetables. Get 20 to 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day and do something to deal with your stress levels. Mm -hmm. We all deal with mm -hmm. stress. You need to figure out how to deal with that. Yeah, and as we look at this, it, again, it goes back to the simple fact that you need to exercise more eat less and live an active lifestyle. Uh, we wish we could hold ourselves out as some sort of, you know, revolutionaries on medicine, but it basically gets down to that. If you could just pop a pill and make it all go away, that'd be great, but it doesn't work that <laughs> it way. It doesn't work that way. You know, as, we, as, the, as the evidence mounts here, do you guys see uh, attitudes changing in the American public where people will go to their doctor and say, don't give me a pill, what can I do to make my life better? I think that's changing. I do. I mean, holistic approaches are becoming much more common. You know, there's so much more research about side effects. And, you know, I'm curious, are there any long-term studies? The lower your age that you start taking statins, are you more likely to get risk factors? Mm -hmm. You know, if you start taking it, say, at 40 rather than 50 or 60, what are we looking at long-term? And I don't know if that's been looked into, but it's something we should really think about. It's really an experiment that society is undergoing right now of those long-term risk factors. But you're, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's why we see the new interest in alternative medicine. People mm -hmm. want to know, what can, I, what can I do to take charge of my own health? I think that's a positive trend. All right. Uh, we'll leave this issue here for, for a quick moment. Nick, I think you have some uh, Obamacare headlines we want to get to here. Nick, of course, the best-selling mm -hmm. author of the Obamacare Survival Guide. No better guy to tell you about the, the newest uh, updates on Obamacare, the law. And turning now to Obamacare, the president's signature health care law that continues to make headlines. A new report out of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services concluded that 11 million small businesses, small business employees may see their premiums rise under the law. The increase is due to the, in part to the law's requirements that premiums can no longer be based on a person's age. The shift has uh, sent premiums higher for younger workers and lower for older ones. A Michigan cancer patient says that her insurance plan, in fact, was canceled because of Obamacare. Julie Boonstraw, who was diagnosed five years ago with leukemia, was featured in an ad by Americans for Prosperity where she said her out-of-pocket costs are now so high that her health insurance is just flatly unaffordable. The target of the ad, Michigan Representative Gary Peters, had his campaign lawyers send a letter to Michigan TV stations threatening their FCC licenses if they continued to air the ad. Boonstraw's response Battling cancer every day is more frightening than their scare tactics. And Democratic governors are delivering a message to President Obama on Obamacare as well. We need help. Many who are running for re-election in hotly contested midterm races feel not enough has been done to reverse the consistently negative public opinion that surrounds the law. Asked if the White House has done enough to sway public opinion on the Affordable Care Act, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick said the answer is simply no. All right, Nick, we know that this issue is going to be one that comes up a lot in the campaign. And, you know, it's been interesting talking to you as a guy who studied this law closer than anybody I know on the impacts that you predicted were going to happen, mm -hmm. that they're in, or in the book, and now we're starting to see them come to fruition. So we'll get you to check in with us every once in a while for some of these updates uh, sure. because I know a lot of folks out there are concerned about this right now. We'll have much more here on America's uh, Forum. It was great to have you with us here as well, Thank Morgan. So thanks for your uh, report there <laughs> on those new heart health guidelines. Fascinating stuff there. Guys, you can always reach out to us on social media. Contact me directly, John B. underscore Newsmax, or any of us here at the program at Newsmax TV. Email us anytime, connect at NewsmaxTV.com, or find us on Facebook, Newsmax TV, Facebook.com backslash Newsmax TV. Stay with us. We'll have much more when we come back. Only two lawmakers.